here we go. So we have two crates of mass, 75 kilograms and 110 kilograms. Okay. I'm going to go rather fast because we already did this already. So here, assume the two crates as one, right? Then if we were to look at that, this being one will have FG going straight down. Now this FG is equal to the mass one plus mass two times G. Okay, because we're looking at this as one single unit. Then we have F push, right? So here we have F push, and that happens to be 730 newtons, right? And then we have F normal, and F normal is going straight up. Okay, and we have friction. All right, we have friction. Now, I believe you already calculated a few things already, right? Friction. Is equal to mu times F normal. And we calculated the F normal by calculating the FG, right? And FG, I believe it was 1075 plus 110 times 9.8. And that came out to be, I think, 1813 newtons. And we agreed that because there's no acceleration in the y direction, our F normal is the same value as my FG in this case, which happens to be 1,813 newtons. Therefore, when we calculated our friction, our friction was equal to uh, 0 0.15 times the F normal which happens to be 1813. And our friction came out to, uh, what is that? 271.95. Okay, so when we did this sum of all forces in the x is equal to m a x, right? And then sum of all forces in the x direction, we said we had f pull, right? Plus f friction. So when we set them equal to each other, m, now this m obviously is mass total, right? mass total times AX is equal to F pull is going to be, or F push is going to be positive, and our friction is going to be negative. And the mass total happens to be 75 plus 110 times AX is equal to uh, 730 minus 271.95. So when we calculated the A, acceleration, I think we got something like 2.476 meters per second squared. So we already did this part. Now we're going to be doing the other part where we can actually see. Oops. All right. How much force is pushing this 110 kilogram box? Okay. So calculate the force that each crate exerts on each other. 
So if I were to look at just this 110 kilogram box, okay, so I'm going to look at just this. So here, this 110 kilogram box It's going to be accelerating at this acceleration because it's going to move together as one, right? So we know the acceleration of this in the x direction is equal to 2.476 meters per second squared. Something's causing that acceleration. That is caused by the force normal of this 75 kilogram box onto my 110 kilogram box. So the F normal of 75 kilogram box, right, to the 110 kilogram box is what's causing that. All right. There's also friction happening between the 10 kilogram, 110 kilogram box, right? There's friction happening, right? In the opposite direction. And then that friction is different than this friction. This friction is for both crates, but this friction is only for 110, right? So this friction is for 110 kilogram box only. All right, and of course, we still have Fg, right? So we have Fg of 110, and we have Fg, uh, F normal of 110. So what is Fg of 110? That is nothing more than just 110 times 9.8. Okay, and what is that? Well, 110 times 9.8 happens to be 1,078 newtons. That means my normal force is also 1,078 newtons because there are no other vertical forces acting on it. If there were other vertical forces, these will not be the same. So if we were to calculate this frictional force, well, friction of 110 is equal to mu sub k times the F normal of 110. So we already know what mu sub k is, and it's still going to be 0.15. Okay, so 0 0.15 times the F normal of 1078, right? That is the F friction of 110. So what is that value? So F friction of 110 is equal to, I guess something like 161.7 Newtons. So we're looking for this. All right, so here we go. So for part B, sum of all forces in the x is equal to m a x now this is for 110 kilogram crate then sum of all forces in the x for 110 is equal to i have two forces that's f normal 75 plus f friction 110 then M110 times AX is equal to F normal 75 is positive because that's in the positive direction, right? So I'm going to consider that to be positive direction. Then friction will be then negative. Okay, friction will be negative. 
Now, mass 110. We know the acceleration. This is the acceleration, which is 2.476. is equal to F normal of 75 kilogram per rate minus 161.7. All right. So what is that equal to? So I can solve for my F normal for 75 is equal to, right? Um, I guess... This will be um, 272.36 plus 161.7. So my F normal for 75 kilogram crate comes out to 434.1 newtons. So that means the 75 kilogram crate is pushing this 110 kilogram crate with 434.1 newtons of force. So what does that mean? That means this is also pushing back with the exact same amount. So F normal of 110 is equal to right, F normal of 75. Because they have to act, you know, against each other. Okay? Action reaction pair, basically. All right? So that's, so F normal for 110 is also equal to 434. All right. Any questions? Good. All right, then. Um, let's take a look. Um, we'll move on. So here, I have a wet bar of soap, okay, a wet bar of soap, and it is um, 150 grams, and it slides without friction, so th there's no friction in this, so no friction, down the ramp of two meters long, inclined at 7.3 degrees. So here, I always like to draw a free body diagram and maybe even a little picture to illustrate what's going on to sort of give visual presentation of what that problem states. Okay. So here, So this angle here happens to be uh, 7.3 degrees. And here's a bar of soap. It's a lavender. So this is a lavender color right here, right? Now, this soap will have FG going straight down. And it will have F normal going straight up. This FG, however, can be broken up into its components of FGY, and FGX. FGX is 
parallel with the incline, right? Now, FGX is equal to FG sine theta, which means it is M times G times sine of 7.3 degrees. That's what FGX is. Okay. FGY is FG cosine theta. Because this angle here, theta, is the same as that angle, theta, here. All right? So how long does it take to reach the bottom? So they're asking, what is the time, right, neglecting friction? So maybe it's a good idea to find out if it starts from here, right, and I'm going to assume that it starts from rest. It doesn't really say this anywhere. I'm just going to assume that initial velocity is at rest. So I'm going to say initial velocity is zero meters per second. And then delta x happens to be two meters. And that is along here. Delta X is along here. Right? They want to know how much time it would take. It'd be nice if we know the acceleration. Huh? If we know the acceleration, then we can solve for time. So let's find the acceleration of this bar of soap. Okay? So we know sum of all forces in the X direction is equal to MAX. And this is the x direction now because we are rotating our axis, right? So this here is the positive direction for my acceleration. Then sum of all forces in the x direction is equal to, there, there's only one force, and that is fgx in the x direction. If there were friction, then it'd be friction would be going the opposite direction again, right? So here, when I set these equal to each other, MAX is equal to then FGX. But we said FGX is equal to MG sine of 7.3 degrees. Look what, yeah? Sorry, I have a quick question. Why wouldn't it be mg cosine 7.3 degrees? Because if I were to look at this triangle right here, right? Mm -hmm. If I were to draw that a little bit bigger, here is my fgy, and here is my fg. My f G becomes the hypotenuse, and my FGX is the opposite of my angle theta. This theta and this theta are the same thetas. I think we proved that in your note packet, okay? Because mm -hmm. this becomes complementary angle of this angle theta. And this here is 90 degrees, so this angle has to be same as my angle theta. Since this is the opposite of my angle theta, and this is 90 degrees right here, this is, this is 90 degrees, this is basically opposite, which is sine. Okay. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Yep. All right. Any other questions? All right, so yeah, you have to practice drawing this little triangle here. This is so crucial. This will always point straight down. This will be parallel with your incline. This is perpendicular with your incline, and this is the angle theta. And your FG is the hypotenuse. Now, for this, 
look what happens to the mass. Mass cancels out. So it doesn't really matter what the mass of your soap is. It's still going to behave the same way. Therefore, my AX now becomes G, which is 9.8 times sine of 7.3 degrees. So what is my acceleration in the x direction? So 9.8 times sine of 7.3, right? And I get something like 1.25. Meters per second squared. So that is the acceleration of the bar of the spar of soap. Okay, so now we know this. So this is 1.25 meters per second squared. Right, 1.25. So now I'm looking for time. Right. So I can say, well. Looks like equation number two, delta x is equal to vit plus one half a t squared. So my delta x, 2.0. My initial velocity is zero, so the whole term drops out to zero. Plus one half times 1.25 times t squared. All right. So what is that? So 1.25 times 0.5, so I get t squared is equal to 2.0 divided by 0 0.625, all right? So what is that? That's 3.2. So t is equal to square root of 3.2, which is, I get 1.79 seconds as my time. So it takes 1.79 seconds to reach the bottom of the incline for that soap. Cool? All right, so that was part A. What about part B? How would this change if the soap's mass were 250 grams? Will it change? No. Uh, Soap's mass is independent of its motion. All right. Any questions? Good. All right, let's take a look at number nine. Number nine. Number nine. All right. So here, a block shown here at 4-48 lies on a smooth plane tilted at angle of 22 degrees to the horizontal. All right, so determine the acceleration of the block as it slides down the plane. So we're going to assume that there's no friction involved. Okay. Yeah, it says here, ignore friction at the end. So here, we're going to have, again, here's FG. Here is your, right, F, G, Y, and this is your F, F, G, X, right, F, G, X. So this is your F, G, X, and this is your F, G, Y. And this angle theta and this angle theta are the same angle thetas. So if this is 22 degrees, that means this is 22 degrees. And this right here is a right angle, so this is a right triangle, and this is the opposite, this is the adjacent. So we can say FGX is equal to FG 
times sine of theta. All right. All righty then. Let's take a look at what's going on. And of course, we should also write down f normal here. This f normal, if there are no other vertical forces acting in this y prime direction, this and this are equal to each other. Okay? All right. So acceleration of the block as it slides down. So for part A, sum of all forces in the x direction is equal to m a x, and then sum of all forces in the x direction is equal to, I just have one force in the x direction, and that's just f g x. Right? And since it's going to be sliding down the incline, this is the positive direction. I'm going to make the direction of motion to be positive. So if I set these equal to each other, MAX now is equal to FGX. And MAX then is equal to MG times sine of theta. All right? Because FG is simply M times G. Therefore, look what happens to my mass. Again, my mass cancels out. So my acceleration in the x direction becomes 9.8 times sine of 22 degrees. So what's my ax? My ax then is equal to I get 3.67 right, meters per second squared is my acceleration of my block. And then for part B, okay, if the block starts from rest at 9.1 meters up the plane, so this distance here is 9.1 meters, okay, this distance here. So if it slides down, it's going to slide 9.1 meters, okay? So for part B, initial velocity is zero because it starts from rest. Delta x is equal to, delta x really is delta x prime, right? 9.1 meters. We know our acceleration now. Our acceleration in the x direction is 3.67 meters per second squared. They're looking for speed, right? Uh, Vf at the bottom. It looks like we don't have time here. Right? And since we have no time, we use equation number three which is Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2A delta x. So Vf, Vf is what we're looking for. Vi, 0, square that, you still get 0. 2 times 3.67 times 9.1. All right, so if I multiply this times this times 2, right? I get something like Vf squared is equal to 66.8, right? 1, 4, 8, whatever, right? So, Vf is equal to, square root of that, I get 8.17 meters per second as my final speed at the bottom. Now, obviously, when you take a square root of a number, you're going to get plus or minus. But since they want the speed, it's always going to be positive value. Okay? All right. All right.
right, any questions so far? I'm going to hold off on these two because first of all, this one, I'm going to need a whole page to do this and I gave you only this much room. So I'm going to do this next year. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm going to do this next year and we'll have a separate quiz on this part on the incline planes with friction. All right. So for now, I'm going to stop the lecture here, and I will need you to print out this mock quiz, and I'll show you where it is.